I'm taking a closer look at Apple's newest iPad mini today. If you're wondering if it's worth the hype or just another tablet, you're in the right place. We'll dive into what's new, what's still missing, and how it stacks up against Apple's other iPads. Stick around till the end to find out if the iPad mini is still the best little tablet out there or if it's time to look elsewhere. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is new in AI. I've owned several over the years and even bought them as gifts. It's the perfect tablet for reading in bed, tossing into a packed carry-on, or propping up in the kitchen while I cook. And for all of that, the Mini is the one. Unlike Apple's larger iPads, the Mini is different, which aims for versatility and seems almost like a laptop replacement. With its compact 8.3-inch screen, it feels closer in size to an iPhone, designed to be the ultimate go-everywhere device that complements your laptop, not replaces it. The Mini has often felt like an afterthought, updated only occasionally and still using apps and an operating system meant for bigger screens, but it's still my go-to choice. This new iPad Mini, though, feels off. It feels like a device designed by a supply chain rather than by someone who loves the Mini's form and function. Sure, it has Apple's latest A17 Pro chip, which should mean better performance, but there's little here to set it apart. Apple's pitch? If you want Apple intelligence in a small tablet, this is your choice. That's it. So, now, Apple intelligence is promising a lot, but right now, it doesn't even exist. It's months away. And while this Mini is technically faster than its predecessor, it's still not as powerful as the other iPads. So, if you're looking to upgrade, there's not much here that makes it feel like a leap forward from the 2021 model, or even the one before that. Matter of fact, if you want a tablet that's compact, good for reading, browsing, and some light gaming, it's a solid option. But considering the $499 price tag, you might want to either save some money with an older model or invest a bit more for a more powerful iPad Air. There are some new features, like compatibility with the Apple Pencil Pro. And sure, that's exciting for digital artists who prefer working on a smaller screen. And we have some new colors, including a faint blue and purple. But it's essentially a remix of the old Mini. The front camera remains awkwardly positioned in portrait mode, Touch ID is still in the power button, and jelly scrolling from the last model still lingers. It feels like a device that Apple hasn't given its full attention to. The Mini's A17 Pro chip does make it 30% faster than the last model, so it's capable of running most apps smoothly. For tasks like light gaming, movie streaming, and reading, it performs fine. But in heavier games like Assassin's Creed Mirage, you'll notice frame drops, showing it's still not built to handle everything smoothly. Serious. In the end, the pitch is clear. The new Mini is simply the smallest iPad that supports Apple Intelligence. If you're betting on Apple Intelligence to change your device experience, it might make sense. But if you're buying an iPad Mini hoping for something radically different or more powerful than past models, you'll find very little to get excited about. Hopeful. Could Apple have done more? Absolutely. The Mini has the potential to be much more than it is now. For now though, if you want the iPad Mini, this is the one to get. Just don't expect it to wow you beyond the usual. Yot. For more honest reviews and the latest tech insights, make sure to watch our videos recommended here. Thanks for watching. We love you.